So, hi guys, um, like I said, my name is Matthew and I am an engineer. So, just to clear that straight up. Uh, and in the spirit of giving some history on our careers, uh, here's my early coastal engineering experience doing some uh, terraforming. Um, and today, what I'm going to share with you is really some uh, large scale habitat construction that we've done. It's all been funded by recreational fish and license money in general. Um, we came into the space and took a real uh, offshore construction approach. So um, my background is in building mega structures like Dave showed earlier today. Um, I think it's a really nice example of what happens when a team of passionate engineers get in the room with a team of passionate marine biologists and do what each group does best. So we're really good at getting stuff in the water and designing it to be stable and design. So that's what we're going to talk to you about today. Um, there was a just a uh, comment uh, in my last presenting just about co-creation and that really is at the heart of this. So um, again, it's where we've been able to work in uh, designing these sort of massive structures uh, alongside marine biologists and the with the design of them. Um, I will say, for an engineer, it's quite scary talking to you guys, so be gentle on you. <laughs> um, the other thing I want to tell you is we've got now got 15 examples of habitat restoration. Um, I hate calling them artificial reefs, but that's what you all call them. We like to call them engineered substrates. There's 15 examples of them in Australia that we've done ourselves. Um, and it's been a really good opportunity for us to, to experiment, um, usually in degraded, uh, in degraded habitat. So most of our reefs have been put into areas that have suffered some kind of um, degradation by trawl fishing in, in general or dredging. So um, it's probably given us a little bit of freedom to, to do what we call rapid prototyping, um, which um, is often quite scary for scientists, but we've been able to get out there and have a go without uh, having to be too concerned about the environmental impacts or negative impacts. So it's been that we've learned lots, basically. Um, our specialisation uh, just I'm not going to plug us, but our specialisation is just in stabilising structures in the marine environment. So we're really good at building foundations, building for wind farms, we build for platforms, um, port infrastructure, we do a lot of scale protection as well, so we do coastal erosion control. And uh, about five years ago they started a, a, an artificial reef program in Western Australia, and we love fishing, being in the ocean. Um, bought my first boat when I was 12, got salt water in my veins. And then we had a business that built concrete structures and put them in the water um, for, for other industries. So again, we, we realised that we had all the sort of um, cross-industry experience that the reef space needed. And I think actually most importantly, the ability to deliver them on a large scale safely and very professionally. So all those kind of R&D processes that have been spoken about this morning have actually got in place, but importantly the deployment installation methods and ability to do them to industry best practice, if you like. Um, we also have marine biologists working for us. Um, I just want to point out some of my teams here too. So, um, Rena Finlayson's uh, one of our marine biologists, and when I started the business, I never dreamed I'd have a marine biologist working for us, and then there are three, which is really cool. And Vaughan Nelson, you can stick your hand up, Vaughan. <laughs> Uh, he's uh, one of our reef engineers, we think probably the first reef engineer in the world. Um, and we all got to do our own research. Um, we also collaborate with the UWA, uh, Kevin, and the um, University of New South Wales as well. Um, part of the research we've done is into hydrodynamics of the structures. So this is the Centre for Offshore Foundations at UWA. So we've got, they're, they're like the best guys in the world at um, working out uh, hydrodynamics on a structure and how to make them stable. Um, here we're demonstrating that our structure creates upwelling, which is um, important for lifting nutrient into the water column and getting recruitment. Um, it's also really important for stability. So when we talk about cost of deployment, um, we want to create structures that are stable that don't blow away in a cyclone. These structures sort of perform like a spoiler on an F1 car, so they push themselves in when the storm comes down. We figured out the things like sliding and um, we actually used oil and gas engineering standards and applied them to artificial reefs. So again, there's that cross-industry collaboration. Those guys have figured it all out already, so we just had to tap into it. 
Um, this is what it looks like. So, um, kind of carrying on from where Andrew was at with his golf balls. This is a 23-ton golf ball, if you like. <laughs> I wouldn't like to whack it with a stick, but um, <laughs> uh, just some of the things we've done here. Um, you can see the guy standing there. It's five meters tall. Um, we use a hydraulic remote-operated tool to deploy it, so it's done completely hands-free. It's really safe. We we'll pick it up from the yard, and stick it on the truck, take it off the truck, put it on the boat, or, or basically remotely. Um, we use DGPS to position them. Um, the actual structure itself we co-created with Heath Fault and the guys at New South Wales DPI. So we um, did a diving suitability assessment for it and sized the opening so that you can get in and out safely as a scuba diver and met that kind of performance criteria for it. Um, but it also we borrowed from um, Boeing aeroplane wing design where they curl up the ends of wing tips to um, stop the end effects and applied that to this pyramid shape and actually got the current to flow over the structure instead of just around it. So it's sort of like a um, Richard Hammond engineering connections type story that we borrowed from, from different things. So, um, and, um, we've also worked with Pete Falk on sizing other caves and creating crevices, um, which Andrew was talking about, those sort of V-shaped crevices. Um, to help influence recruitment and support um, support a real diverse ecosystem on them. <clears throat> so a well-engineered substrate <laughs> can deliver recruitment like this. Um, this is in Harvey Bay, it's about two and a half years old. Um, and really, uh, we were doing it for recreational fishing, so the fishing guys are really interested in how big the local <laughs> are that are circling on it. Um, but actually there's another story about the flora and macroinvertebrates and things that recruit onto the structure. We've also been looking at how they decay and what influence that has on the benthic habitat uh, on, and how we've recreated that. So remember we're putting these in places that have been troll fish, so basically the habitat's been ripped out and the whole sea bed's turned into a mobile sand substrate and nothing can grow back. So um, this just gives you an idea uh, from the flow and the impact that has on the recruitment of bait fish onto the structure. Um, so that's a scan at Shoalhaven, so it's a temperate, temperate water at the country. Um, <clears throat> I'll just put this up um, with reference to Ian Sullivan's. This is a study he did separate to us, but he looked at the biomass that sits on engineered structures, if you like, compared to natural reef. And I think it makes a pretty compelling case that uh, a well-engineered substrate can deliver some really good outcomes for a, for a degraded habitat. Um, um, we kind of liken it to taking people out of caves and sticking them in high-rise luxury apartments. You know, you, you get more people living in apartments, more food, mortality rates drop. You, you know, and if you think about putting these substrates in as a kind of terraforming like, like we do on lands, like repairing wetlands and things like that, um, we're using these to encourage natural improvement of the reef back to where it traditionally was. Um, so extending that, we took the ultimate of coastal degradation, which is a marina at the front of our, um, pretty, just down the road from our office, um, completely destroys all the literal processes and, and you know, it's great if you own a boat, but not for much else. Um, and we donated a dive trail uh, to, the, to the local council and there's this really nice quirk in the legislation that has a 25 metre annexation of the seabed um, that's owned by the marina so you can actually have a living lab um, around the marina break wall without having to get federal permits. Uh, it's really good. <laughs> um, we got Oceans Institute um, backed by the Wade Foundation to do the, uh, do the baseline surveys and the ongoing monitoring on it. Um, we've built a facility that the community loves. People have actually changed their um, recreational habits on the weekend. They go here, there's businesses that have opened up on the back of the amount of people that are going there snorkel. And the real coup that we got was a fishing exclusion zone backed by the Recreational Fishing Association so that we could actually measure the positive impact this has on the biomass. So that just marks out the control sites there. This is, uh, you can't get a good photo of it because the business is never, never great in WA, there's always a southwestern thing in there. 
Um, so this is what it sort of looks like in a 3D model. Um, interestingly, that small structure on, the, on your left um, is an abalone structure. Um, we initially developed that. It's sort of been adopted for the ranching operation um, down in the southwest of Western Australia. And they've got nearly 10,000 structures out now. Um, and they've done all the work around um, juvenile recruitment and reducing mortality rates through good, um, good uh, morphology, basically. So there's some really good um, uh, parallel kind of things going on that you guys can leverage with your reef. Um, this is just uh, demonstrating the species richness that's improved over the whole system of that marina. Um, so we've actually seen the whole system uh, improve. Um, and charts are good, but I love the pictures. Um, so, there's just some um, good examples of fish recruiting to the structures, but also um, sea squirts, uh, corals. Um, and, and it's been really interesting for us to learn how all these creatures recruit and use the structures. So, particularly inside the pyramids, uh, where it's sheltered and overhanging, um, the recruitment's been amazing. So, it actually makes a really kind of cool dive to take the kids on. And, go inside and it sort of turns into this little magical cave. Um, we also built some massive steel structures. These are 75 tonnes each, but we used the sort of salvage method to deploy them. So we used the buoyancy tanks to float them and um, deploy them. Uh, we've got two at the front of Perth and we've got two going off Marimula later this, um, later this year. And we've actually used these to, um, if you like, as a kind of big box and then we put all that different habitat features on them and get to um, get to see what's effective and what's not. And we were kind of actually sneakily doing this with some of our oil and gas clients. We were using them, we were sticking habitat features on the stuff they were buying off us. We, we just didn't tell them. And the really, the really good thing is they got monitored before you. So um, one of my mates at Fugo has now got two video cameras on all these ROVs in like stereo video cameras measuring fish on the northwest shelf. Um, every time they do a survey for Woodside or Chevron, they're actually feeding data back to the Oceans Institute. So it's so another really good collaboration there. Um, we've now taken that to a different level where we've taken some retired offshore structures, and these are humongous uh, structures. Um, and we've all them onshore, thoroughly cleaned them, um, re engineered them, added habitat features onto them. And, Opened, the, opened these tanks up, these were buoyancy tanks that were used offshore. And we're putting them uh, right now out into another field um, in the Exmouth Gulf in an area that where the pre, um, prawn trawlers have smashed it. Um, and uh, it's, been, um, it's been really well received by the community, but there's all these really great little um, coral research projects swinging off it. Um, some of the ideas we've got for the reef are around rubble stabilisation. So we've got techniques for stabilising riprap, um, pumping grouts into rubbles and things like that, which may be useful for you guys. Another idea we had was to replicate this tabular plate coral and we're really looking to replicate the um, ecological service it provides in terms of providing shelter for reef fish. Um, but also to give you guys a, a stable substrate, which is really important. Um, you don't want to go through all this process of putting out these corals and spending all that money, only to have it blow away in the next storm. So this type of approach uses um, piling techniques we use for stabilising pipelines. Um, we can cast habitat onto it, you can plant your corals on before the other algae's take over. Um, so it's just an example of an idea we've had that might be useful for, say, raising the level of a reef um, a metre almost immediately and getting that sort of um, civil amenity back as well as the ecological function. We've been doing some work in wave attenuation, um, using reef structures to build fringing reefs. And the last thing, I'm um, just coming into my time, but um, we actually have a working model on how to get a permit for a reef. Um, we've done it multiple times now, and I know there's a few of you guys trying to figure out how to do it. Um, we've done it, and we'd be really happy to share with you um, the whole process on, on how to get it through. We just haven't done it in the Great Barrier Reef. And this last slide just gives you a sort of feel for some of the stuff we look at um, when we're building a reef in terms of engineering stuff that really supports the core function of 
building a reef to support your corals long term. Cool.